Hey everybody, so a lot of you have asked me to comment on this independent repair provider program. This is a new program that Apple's come out with, which I'm uh, happy about and I'd like to commend them for. So let's just go over what this means and what it is they're advertising here. So it says, independent repair provider program. The independent repair provider program is designed for companies interested in offering out of warranty repair service for iPhones. Qualifying companies can gain access to Apple genuine parts, tools, training, service guides, diagnostics, and resources to perform a variety of out of warranty repairs, such as iPhone display and battery replacement. Placements. Who can apply? Companies interested in performing out of warranty repairs can apply. Parts resellers and distributors are not eligible for the program. Now, this is pretty cool because one of the criticisms I've had of Apple for a really long time is that, the, well, two of them are A, the Apple authorized repair centers are not allowed to do a lot of basic repairs. And the second criticism I've had is that independent repair centers don't have to dumpster dive and do all this nonsense and rubbish to find parts, schematics, diagrams. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose in finding good stuff. But it would be nice if the company just allowed you to purchase them from them. And I would like to commend Apple for doing something here that I think is really cool and a step in the right direction. Even if it's not everything, you know, it doesn't include MacBook GS yet. There's a couple of things in here that I have concerns about. Anytime you're advocating for somebody, whether it's a person or a company, whether it's a friendship, a relationship, business relationship to change, you have to acknowledge when they've made a step. Even if you want them to make this step, if they just made this step, you have to say, thank you so much for making that step. That's a really cool thing that you did. You have to incentivize them to actually continue doing something good. And I think here, even if it is a small step, it is a step that everybody here should pat Apple on the back for, commend them for doing what I believe is the right thing. Now, let's just go through this. I want to talk about some of the comments, questions, concerns I have about it, because uh, I, I am somewhat of a pessimist. So let's just go through this and my thoughts. So it says, who can apply? Companies interested in performing out of warranty iPhone repairs may apply. Parts resellers and distributors are not eligible for this program. Now, the reason I think they don't want parts sellers and distributors is they don't want people buying parts from Apple only to resell them without actually uh, doing repairs. They don't want there to be, um, th there are, I think what they're d saying here is that it's, like, you know, we, we are barely able to provide parts for ourselves. It's going to be difficult to provide parts for everybody. We like to, you know, if we're going to go, go into this, we would like to dip our toe in rather than just dump, uh, jump straight ahead into the pool. And again, that, that, that's fine with me. I'm, I understand that. This is something that would mean that I am most likely, I would never be eligible for this program. One of the questions that I've got for many years as I do board repair videos is, where do you get the connectors? Where can I buy a chip? Where do I buy this stuff? I don't trust some random person on Skype or Alibaba. So I set up a supply store that you can see here. And on this supply store, you can see all of the different parts and uh, chipsets and stuff that I sell. So since uh, you can buy stuff like chipsets from me, you can buy an, uh, let's, if you wanted an ISL 9239. Since you're able to buy chips from me, this most likely would exclude people like me from the program. But again, I think that this is, I understand where they're coming from here and I respect it. The next thing that it says here is the premises must be in a commercially zoned area. A residential address is not acceptable as a service location. Uh, now, now, one of the things I remember saying in an old video a long time ago is that when it comes to what a real business is, let's just see if I can find this video, on a real business. This is a video I did a long time ago, ranting on the concept of what a real business is, and I don't like it when people try to make you feel like you're less than simply because you've just started out and you can't afford an office yet. So I do respect and understand that when people do start out, they are probably going to be doing something from their apartment because you need to start a business and start making money before you can afford to get a commercial location the same way that I did. But at the same time, I can understand if they want to get their, you know, just dip their toe in and get started with working with the independent repair community, it seems like they would rather be working with people that actually have a store, that uh, you know have a business, that have a license and all that, rather than just work with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. And again, not perfect, but it's something that I understand and I can respect. The next part here that we have, it says... Tech. Technician certification, participating service companies using iPhone genuine parts are required to have Apple certified technicians perform the repairs. Becoming certified to repair Apple products requires passing exams through an online authorized testing center. Certifications are updated on a per product basis annual. And this is, again, understandable. I haven't taken any of these tests yet, but I understand where they're coming from, where they're saying, if we're going to sell you parts, we'd like to know that you're not going to screw everything up. Uh, one of the problems that I had when I had the supply company, and that's something that I also talk about here is that people would often purchase 
parts for me, and then they would destroy them and they would send them back. So let's see if I have got a picture of some of the stuff that people used to do to the stuff that I sell here. So like they would buy something like this. Did to the part that he bought so that it would maybe. They would buy the. They, they would buy this. This is what he did to the part that he bought so that it would maybe work like the one that he needed. And they would do this. Like they bought the wrong part for them, so they would bend the entire PC board, they would destroy the part in order to make it work. So it, if you are going to sell parts, one of the things that we have to deal with in a modern society whereby people pay by credit cards, where there's an 800 number on the back of the card that you could call to get your money back for virtually any reason, regardless of whether you're in the right, is that if you're selling parts, it can cost you a lot of money if you're selling a part that's easy to break to somebody who doesn't know how to install it. And I understand and respect why a company doesn't want to deal with that type of back and forth where people, you know, they, they buy a screen, they plug the connector and they jam it in the wrong way, they ruin the screen, they return it or they file a chargeback if they're not able to return it and then Apple is out money. I understand why they would want people that are certified if they are selling parts. Again, it is less free than me simply being able to go over to Mobile Centrics or I fix it and just buy something as a normal consumer. But again, we are, we are making incremental steps here towards them becoming more repair friendly, more independent friendly. And this is a fine step, even if it's not everything. I understand why it is they're doing it. Now let's get to the next part. Please submit an email to irpapplicant at apple.com providing all the information below. Legal business name, principal owner, location address, location phone number, contact email, business website, previous experience or history with Apple as a service provider or reseller. Now, this is the part that irks me just a little bit, and here's why. So it says, previous experience with Apple, or history with Apple as a service provider or reseller. So do they mean an authorized service provider or any service provider? And, when they, and the other thing about reseller, the reason this just uh, strikes a chord with me, and this is a criticism of virtually every manufacturer in this business, not just Apple. One of the things I talked about a few years ago was the Lenovo, since I, I really and I like the Lenovo ThinkPad series. I believe in the high-end ThinkPad series, so I figured I'd want to become an authorized service provider for them. I had to get an A-plus certification, which was a joke in and of itself. How, knowing how many FireWire 400 ports you can daisy-chain is information that is a complete and utter waste and something that I'm never going to get out of my head. But it was a question on the test, so I'm glad I studied it. But anyway, one of the things here is that I needed to sell about $60,000 a quarter worth of, of Lenovo merchandise in order to be an authorized repair center. Now, I remember at the time, like, B&H was selling a specific machine for somewhere in the $860 range, and I could buy it wholesale for about $859. It, there, there's no profit on it. There's no small business on earth that's going to agree to these terms and be profitable without really, really um, difficult concessions being made. And it, one, of, one of the things it does is it incentivizes you to sell customers rather than actually fix things. So if in order to maintain my uh, certification or authorization, I have to sell $20,000 a month worth of products and you walk in the store, is my incentive going to be to sell you a new one or is my incentive going to be to fix the one that you have? It changes the incentive structure, which is one of the reasons that for any provider, not just Apple, I have not wanted to become authorized or certified because it typically comes with those uh, gotchas uh, or those where you need to sell a, cer a certain amount of gross sales of their products in order to maintain an authorized service provider status. Now, one of the questions I would have here is, are you able to apply for this if you're new. So if you, does this mean that we only want to accept people into the program who were at one time Apple authorized but are now not Apple authorized, who at one time were Apple authorized resellers but are now not uh, authorized resellers, or are we willing to simply accept anybody who has experience? Or is it just that they want to know what the experience is, and even if you don't have the experience, they're okay with it? That's something that, uh, str that that's one of the first things that I do wonder about. The next, it says Apple will not consider applications that do not meet the program requirements. Meeting program requirements does not guarantee acceptance of the program. Apple reserves the right to reject any application without comment. Apple will not consider applicants that use Apple trademarks as part of a company name or web page. So, this part makes sense. Again, you know, don't pretend that you're us. I'm sure that Apple has got many people that r want to associate with Apple or pretend that they're a part of Apple or use the Apple logo in their name or something to make their customers more comfortable. It's something that they frown upon. It's also something that you know I typically frown upon. I use Mac Laptop Repair Specialist to tell people that I, sir I, I work on this product. So I mean, you know, I name the business after what I work on. But my website also has said for many years, proud to not be authorized. I'm not Apple certified or authorized, and it's not really hard to figure out that. No, we're not. But it says, you know, they reserve the right to reject any application. Meeting program requirements does not guarantee acceptance of the program. So I'm kind of curious how picky they're going to be with the program. You know, how are they going to choose who is let in, who's not let in? Uh, that, that's something that I am curious about. 
And the other thing that I'm curious about as well is regarding this video about what authorized repair does. So one of the things that it says over here is that, let's see, if we scroll up, it says the qualifying companies can gain access to Apple Genuine Parts Tools, training, service guides, diagnostics, and resources. But one of the problems here, and one of my criticisms that I mentioned in the beginning that's been a criticism for a really long time, is that Apple Authorized Repair doesn't actually have access to a lot of stuff. It's something that I went over in this one video that I really think is worth listening to, where in this video, what does Authorized Repair do? Let's find out. What I did is I called a bunch of Apple Authorized Service Providers. I provided a detailed set of timestamps that you can see here, where every single phone call I made is a timestamp along with the problem that I discussed. And there was one person that said, I can't replace your charge port. We, all we could do is replace the entire phone and you're going to lose all your data simply because your charge port isn't working. I don't have access to buy that part. And what I called an Apple authorized service provider with this issue, not just some uh, random individual. So my concern here would be, well, I have access to everything that an Apple authorized service provider has access to, but one of the problems is that, the, that the Apple authorized service providers at this point are essentially glorified mailing centers, so I don't know if they have access to everything. Again, I am infinitely grateful for the fact that this type of program is going to give people access to things like batteries and screens that are original. By all means, I have no desire to deal with using third-party screens if access to the original good stuff is available. I Really, the, my business again. My business is based on data recovery. It, the profits are based on things like, uh, you know, running a wire from here to there. The knowledge on how to run the wire from here to there is where the profit is made. It's not by using a part that costs ten or twenty dollars less. I'd much rather be able to use something original rather than a refurbished or a high-end copy screen. By all means, I would love to be able to be a part of a program like this. And I think it's really cool that Apple is offering people the opportunity to buy batteries, to buy screens from them. That is a step forward. And even though it does have these caveats to it. It's something that I still uh, am for. At least, you know, if you're an Apple authorized service provider, again, like you, there are times that I've been told where if we did procure a charge port for your device, that we could get in trouble for it. So I understand why people don't want to be authorized. So giving us this option to be a hybrid where I will go through this uh, independent repair provider program to get stuff like batteries and screens, but I will continue to use third-party parts when it comes to charge ports because Apple won't sell it to me. Even if Apple under this repair program is going to cripple you the same way they cripple their own authorized service providers, it still allows you to create a, your own hybrid program in-house. So you could use Apple for batteries. You could use Apple for screens. If Apple will not sell you a charge port because they say, uh-uh-uh, you have a bad charge port, you got to replace the phone. Uh, you could just go to your third-party vendor and buy your parts that Apple not selling you there. So this is not a complete solution. This is not a complete ecosystem, but I don't think it's, in, it's intended or designed to be a complete ecosystem, and I think it's a great step in the right direction, and I think that Apple should be, be commended for doing something right. It's not often that they do something right by the independent repair community, but here it looks like they actually did. So let's thank them, congratulate them, pat them on the back for doing something good for a change. It's the way you incentivize people to continue doing good things. And uh, one of the things I'd like to hear from all of you, because as I said, since I do sell chipsets, I'm not going to be eligible for this program. I don't plan to stop selling chipsets because at, the, you know, at this time, if you would like to, uh, yeah, if you want to do stuff like buy an ISL 9239, if you want to buy an ISL 6259, if you want to buy a PP3v42 or a 3.42 volt regulator, if you want to buy a USB-C charge port controller, you're either... Most of your options are like random, unreputable sellers or this store. So I like the fact that I can provide my base. I like the fact that I can provide my viewers with one location where they can buy all the different little connectors and chipsets and parts to do the work that I do on this channel. I'm not willing to give up my store in order to gain access to this program. So I'm not going to be able to apply for it. Therefore, I can't tell you what the, how stringent the requirements are going to be. I can't tell you what parts are going to be available because I'm not able to apply for it. But one thing I'd really like to do is hear from you. If you've applied for this program to become an independent repair provider, I'd like to know what parts are available. I'd like to know what questions they ask you. I'd like to know who is accepted and is not accepted. If you hear back when you apply or if you don't hear back, and if you're not accepted or are accepted, how what criteria did they use to accept or not accept you? Please do let me know. My email address is lewis at rossmangroup.com. If I don't answer, you can also email... Paul is giving me a 
look of death, so I can't give his email. Lewis at RossmanGroup.com, spelled with two S's and two N's. Let me know, because I'd love to speak on this more. And again, it's one of those things where I am a little pessimistic because of prior experience, but one of the things I said in the recent video is that you really do have to be willing, in that battery, the battery video that I did, you do have to be willing to just take all the junk, all the history, wipe it off the table, sit down, and negotiate in good faith. Apple, what are your concerns? What are the things that worry you? Uh, so, th And then we address those concerns and then they address ours and we work together to find a solution that works for everybody. It's really important to be able to do that, to just throw all that baggage away and be able to take a step forward. And this is a step forward and I think Apple should be commended for doing it. So that's it for today and as always, I hope you learned something. Please do email me if you apply for this program. I really want to know more details about it. Again, I'm not, I can't apply for it, but if you're able to apply for it, love to hear from you.